Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here and I'm back with another tutorial for you today. This one was highly requested on the community page of my YouTube channel and this is going to be about aircraft squadron resizing today. Um, this is something that took me a long time to figure out how to do and I'm going to do my best to go through the steps to show you how it works. Okay. Now, if you want to talk about strategies or techniques or, or like, you know, training plans, it's another thing. All I'm here to show you today is how to physically do it. So the first thing you need to know is you need ships that can carry aircraft and have an aircraft capacity to do it. Also know that not all squadrons can resize. And I'll give you an example of some that can and some that can't. Look at some that can't. So I'm starting off on December 7th on a, a, a historical Japanese AI campaign here. So we can take a look at this uh, Akito Butai over here. Look at the Akagi, right? It's got three squadrons on board. Uh, up here is what you would click when you want to resize something. Not all squadrons can resize. Uh, for example, just about all land-based squadrons cannot be manually resized. They resize on condition, like this one, which is, uh, granted, a carrier-borne uh, squadron, but it has a condition. So this squadron cannot change to size 30 until 1942. And no combination of me clicking on this is going to change that, okay? Let's look at uh, like these squadrons. Again, they can change to 30 on July of 1942, not now. These can change to 20. And you can't do anything about that, all right? Let me show you an example of something that can change. So let's go over to here, and I'm going to create a air combat task force, and I'm going to pick one of these uh, aircraft carrying things. Let's look at the Chiota, right? This is a... Uh, uh, like a seaplane carrier, right? It has a maximum capacity of 24, and it currently has two aircraft, two aircraft squadrons on board. Let me show you what you can do to increase the size of these. So, the first thing I want to do is transfer this squadron back to a base. I only want to do one at a time, and I'll show you why. So, we're going to send that back to base. Something that's very important here. Before you transfer aircraft to and from, if you don't want them to get disabled in the transfer, make sure that the ship is at is in a task force, not docked. Okay? If you do this when the ship is like in port, or if you dock it, uh, you run the risk of when you transfer your aircraft, they will be uh, the air, the game assumes that they're docked and they're going to use a crane to lift the aircraft off the ship, and when they get to the port, they will end up disabled. Okay, if you leave it in a task force not docked, oh, that's the wrong one. If it's un, if it's not docked, when you transfer the aircraft back to port, they are considered to fly back. And let's take a look at that Pete squadron that we just flew. See how it came back in? All aircraft are serviceable. All reserve aircraft are intact. It's able to fly right now. If we were to transfer it to the base docked, they come to you unserviceable all right I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like just for fun so let's duck the Chiota and let's transfer this Jake unit to Hiroshima now let's look at that see the Jakes there none of them are serviceable they're all in maintenance mode uh, now they're gonna have to be reassembled so it's when you're docked or in port and you transfer aircraft from a ship to a base, this is what you're going to get. Now we can't fly these things for at least one turn or more. So make sure you're undocked if you're going to transfer ship aircraft to and from a ship. Okay? Got it? It's very important or you're going to find yourself with a bunch of disabled aircraft and it's going to take you several turns to get them put back together. All right. I'm going to stop this and go back. Or, or better yet, let's, let's do this. Um... Let's do this. Let's find another unit that we can transfer. So how about this ALF unit? Okay, we're going to transfer to ship. Now, again, we're transferring to a ship that is... We want to make sure that it's not docked. Okay. Well, that's not what I want to do. Man, this game, if you miss one button click, it's over, right? Chiota. Okay. Not docked. Then we'll take this Dave unit, or this ALF unit, right? And we're going to transfer it to the Chioda. 
Now, watch this. Do you see on, on the um, on the carrier aircraft in the Kido Butai, it wouldn't let us resize it? Watch what happens when I click here. If I click once, it changes to resize to fit ship. Now, what does that mean? It means that if I leave it in this setting, when I do what I'm about to show you, it will come back to the maximum size that this ship can carry, uh, which is 24 aircraft. So it will resize this squadron to, to a 24 aircraft squadron. Or you can do something like this, where you click a second time and a third time, and now you get this drop this dialog box. Now you can pick any number size of the unit from 0 to 24. So let's try size, oh, I don't know, size 12, okay? Now, it says resize the 12 planes. How do we make it resize? I'm going to show you right now. So we'll exit the aircraft uh, screen. We're going to click on the task force. Now we're going to disband it. Now we're going to reform it. What Chioda, right? Now we're going to hit done. Watch what happens when I click on the ship, and and here's the squadron, max size of twelve. Look at that, size twelve. Pretty cool, right? So now um, this squadron can carry twelve serviceable aircraft plus spares. Let's say, oh, you know what? I actually wanted it to be twenty-four. Well, it's not too late for that. You just click here again, and now you can type in. 24. And again, we will exit this. We will disband the ship that we just did it on. We will reform the task force. I know it's a lot of clicking, but it's worth it. There's a Chioda. Now watch this. 24. So now we just resize the squadron to a size 24 unit. And what can we do with that? Well, we can start putting aircraft in there. Okay, watch this. I just moved 12 aircraft. So how this game works for aircraft replacements, once every seven days of game time, you can redo aircraft replacement up to a maximum of 12 aircraft at a time. So now we've got 18. In seven days, we can do the remaining six to get this up to 24. And why would we want to do that? Well, here's why. Let's say we want to build a bunch of training units, and we want to increase the size of the aircraft that we're training on. This is how you do it. Okay, we took a, a size 6 unit, and now we just turned it into a size 24. And that means what we can do here is go to the pilots, right, and add 24 pilots, or even 32 if you want to get crazy. And within 7 days, they will have 24 aircraft, so you can train 32 pilots a lot faster than you could train, uh, what, 8 pilots or 6 pilots before? And now all these pilots can be trained. Training, let's say we want them to do ASW patrol, right? There you go. Now they're going to start training ASW or whatever skill you want them to train. And that's how you get the squadron size bigger. There's a lot of other things we can do here. Let's 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 try another sample. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just disband this and disband this just to declutter the area, right? Uh, oh, I can't disband it. Oh, okay, whatever. Let's grab another uh, ship and try it. Uh, we'll go air combat. We're going to pick the Zuiho. Okay. So currently on board, it's got... Uh, let's see. It's It's got 22, 21 aircraft aboard right now. Okay. But let's say I wanted to make this Claude unit a zero unit. And I want it to be a lot bigger. Well, here's how I can do it. First of all, I check here to see if it can actually be resized. And if it doesn't just say uh, cannot resize, right? If it just if you click it and it doesn't change from no size, no resize allowed, there's your sign. You can't do it. Now, but if it goes to this or it goes to resize to ship, now you can manually change it. So in this case, I want to go to size 30 because I want this to be nothing but fighters and a ton of them, right? So I hit OK. Right? It says resize the 30 planes. Okay. Now, you notice we have another squadron on board, right? Well, let's see what happens when we uh, disband this and bring it back. So disband. And we're going to form it up again. You notice it didn't change. 
It still says it wants to resize 30 planes, but it didn't. And here's why. A squadron will not resize past the capacity that it, it has on board. So because we already have nine other aircraft on here, it won't go to 30 until we clear this one off. So we're going to transfer this guy back to Hiroshima. Okay. Now, the only thing we have aboard here is Zuiho 1 resizing the 30. Watch what happens when I disband this. Okay. I'm going to form it again. Air combat. Zuiho. 30. Now, what can we do with that? Well, let's do this. Uh, let's see. I want to upgrade this guy to uh, zeros. Boom. I just made a 26 size A6M0 squadron on Zuiho. And this thing, now they're all showing as uh, maintenance and damage because we just swapped the aircraft. And when you when you do this, when, when you uh, upgrade aircraft, it always comes in disabled and damaged. And they have to be put back together. Okay, But that's fine. In two or three days, we're going to have Zuiho driving around with 26 zeros on board. And that's a potent uh, unit. All right. Okay, you guys understanding how this works? All right, hopefully you do. Uh, let me show you some examples of other things that you can't resize. Uh, uh, oftentimes, you're going to see uh, land-based aircraft, which let me find some here. Oh, these are all Navy. Let's go, to, let's go over to China. Look at this NATE unit. That's the only options you get. It can resize to 49 in 1944 or nothing. I cannot manually resize this. And I have yet to find a single land-based squadron, either on the Allied side or the Japanese side, that you can resize. They're, they're either going to have this condition, in which you can't do it until that date, or you can't do it at all. Uh, the only ones that tend to be able to resize are shipborne aircraft, and even then, not all of them. Okay. And let's take a look at this, for example, the, uh, these Kates, right? It won't let me resize them because they're not on a ship. You can't do this on land. They have to be on a ship. Let me show you how we can get this Kate unit to resize now. All right. You ready? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring Kido Butai over to Tokyo. And I'm going to show you how we can use the Akagi to make some really cheesy uh, game-breaking squadrons. Okay. So give me a minute. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to move the Japanese carriers over to Tokyo. And we will, I will show you some other stuff here. Okay, wait one. Okay, so it's now the 8th of December. I moved the turn along. I moved the Kido Butai to Tokyo. And I want to show you something. I'm going to disband this task force. Now, uh, a lot of Japanese players will do this thing that I'm about to show you. And I don't agree with it. I think it's cheesy. I think it's uh, game-breaking. Not realistic. Uh... But I'm going to show you how it works anyway. So Akagi is the Japanese carrier that has uh, the largest capacity right now, right? It can carry 81 aircraft. So, again, we can't resize the aircraft that are currently on board, all right? Because that's just the way the squadron's coded. It can't resize on demand. It resizes when it's allowed to. But that doesn't mean that we can't resize other things with this aircraft carrier. Watch this. So I'm going to take the Akagi. I'm going to transfer the aircraft off of it. Just put them in Tokyo. All right. One more. Now, we should have an empty Akagi. And remember, the Akagi is sitting in port. Undock it's, it is not docked. Now, Let's say I want to increase the size of a torpedo squadron uh, training unit here in uh, mainland Japan. And I have this B5N1 Kate unit that is permanently restricted. I can never uh, move it off of Japan to another land base. But here's what I can do. Check this out. I'm going to transfer this squadron to ship. I'm going to Akagi. And the reason that we can fly it onto Akagi is because Akagi is a task force that is at sea. I got air quotes with my fingers, at sea. So we've just moved this unit to Akagi, all right? Now, let's say I want to make a game-breaking, bogus, ridiculous 
size squadron so that we can do tons of uh, torpedo pilot training rapidly. Check this out. I'm going to keep clicking here until I see either resize to fit ship or this. I always click until I get to this dialogue. Excuse me, because this is what I like to see. I like to do that. I like. I feel like I'm doing something if I type it. I'm gonna type it to 81, which is our max. Okay, resize to 81 planes. Now I'm gonna hit exit. I'm going to disband the Akagi. I'm going to reform the the air combat task force with Akagi. Okay. Watch this. 81. Now we have a size 81 squadron that we can load up with a ton of aircraft. So do you notice how it says no replacements? Or it's not letting me do it right now. It's because we're in day two right now, and we have to wait every seven days to do uh, aircraft replenishment. All right. So that's fine. We can wait. Um, we can wait the seven days and start loading up these extra 30 aircraft that we have in place onto this squadron, or we can upgrade it to these B five N two Kates. We can do anything we want. Uh, if we're producing B five N one Kates as Japan, we can load this bad boy up with whatever, or you can go in here and pick something else like a gene. Watch this. We can, we can downgrade if you will, with air quotes again, we can downgrade to uh, the gene, which is an older model and watch this. We just made a size 71 squadron with these old obsolete genes. And what a great aircraft to train torpedo pilots on. You will never use these in combat, but you just made a massive squadron that you can put how many pilots in? Let's look. 108 pilots. And if you have them training on naval attack with torpedoes, look at all of this. You're going to be training until you until you can't see straight, okay? Do I think this is right? No, I think this is ridiculous. I think it's bogus, and I don't, and I think if you're playing a play by email with somebody, you should establish rules that limit the size of squadrons because this is bogus. But th the reality is, you can still do this, and if you're a Japanese player and you want to make up for the Allied players' new, uh, superior training capability by having the off base training, here's how you do it. All right. You can do this with any of these aircraft carriers, and you can go through and find different squadrons that are, uh, for example, uh, naval squadrons that are permanently restricted to Japan, like this guy. See this? He can never leave Japan like this, but you can transfer him to a ship, the Akagi. Oh, I, I apologize. Don't do that until you move the jeans off, all right? Um, wait till the ship is clear, but you can keep feeding your squadrons onto the Akagi or any of these Japanese aircraft carriers. If you don't need 81, you could, you know, just do this, right? Watch. I'll do it one more time to give you the point, and I think I'm done with this video. We'll use the Kaga, right? Uh, again, it's got squadrons that we can't resize manually. Uh, so here's what we'll do. We'll just uh, transfer these to the base. One more. Okay, now we should have an empty Kaga. So now I'll find that uh, this B5N1 Kate unit, which is, should be uh, only used for training since it really can't go anywhere. I guess you could use it for defending the home islands, but you know they'd have to be pretty close for you to do that. So let's just use it for training. So I will transfer this to the Kaga. And I can go up here to resize. I keep clicking until I get this dialog, and you can pick any number between zero and seventy-two. Resize to twenty uh, seventy-two. Exit. Disband. And reform it. Seventy-two. Now you just made a size seventy-two uh, B five N Kate torpedo squadron and you can just keep doing it and doing it and doing it all right find some clods see these clods um 
Well, look how many of these you got in the pool. You got tons of them, right? Let's uh, let's say we want to make a huge fighter squadron that we want to train. It'd be the same kind of thing, right? You would just go here, pick any ship that can carry aircraft and carry that type of aircraft. So don't be trying to put clouds on a CS or an AV because they won't fit. But let's pick Shikaku, right? All right. I'm just going to, and I, I I probably showed you guys how to do this enough, but I want to make sure through repetition that you see how this is done. Okay, so now I'm going to unload all these aircraft. I mean it. This is the last time I'm going to show you, but I think you guys get the idea, right? Okay, so now we have an empty aircraft carrier. Okay. Now I'll take those clods that I had in... In uh, what should I call it? The uh, just here I, again a restricted uh, command. It can't fly to another place off of Japan, but we can fly it onto a ship. Transfer the ship. We're gonna go to the Shokaku. I'm gonna click this button. Here, let's just do let's do resize the fit ship just so you can see that it works. Okay, resize the fit ship. We know that the ship can carry 72 aircraft, right? Because that's the capacity. Watch what happens when I disband this ship, reform it, show Kaku. What is the size of the squadron now? 64. Why is it 64? Oh, I know why. Because it already thinks that there's. 24 aircraft on here okay so that doesn't always work so that's why there we go that's why i don't like to use resize to fit ship because sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it to so we're going to go back here and change this to 72 okay resize to fit ship can be a little janky sometimes it does weird things that's why i don't like to use it that's why i like to do manual okay what am i doing form new task force air combat shokaku 72 there it is now i can start adding all these old clods that i have no use for into the squadron and make a massive training squadron again game breaking i think it's bogus you should put rules against this but if you don't here you go you can have some massive training squadrons on japan at that point you're going to start running into issues with like uh, aviation support and things like that if you have all these oversized squadrons filling up all your aircraft capacity all over the place that could be an issue you run into, but that's that's another that's another thing. So, in closing, uh, both the Allied and the Japanese aircraft can be si be resized, but you need a ship that can accommodate that type of aircraft and has a certain capacity to do it. Okay, uh, not all squadrons can resize, as I showed you. So you kind of need to look and click on each one and find out which ones can and can't. Then you transfer them to the ship. Make sure you. Transfer to ship while the ship is undocked and in a task force so they don't show up on uh, disabled and vice versa. When you're transferring from the ship to land, um, you want to make sure you're at sea as well because they have a higher chance of landing not disabled. Then you click those buttons at the top for the squadrons that you determine can be resized. See? You, t you click what you want. Then you exit. Then you disband the ship that you just resized the squadron onto, and then you reform it. And when you reform it, it will show you the new size. So over here are aircraft that are mission capable, and these are disabled slash um, reserve, and these are maximum capacity of the squadron. So I think I've covered all the basics here. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about here or you want to know more, let me know. And I'll be happy to uh, answer your questions. Or if you want to go over more to my Discord, I can make a special little quick video to show you whatever it is that you want to see about aircraft resizing. But I think you get the gist. I think you get the idea. So you can do your torpedo bombers, fighters, your dive bombers like that. And if you have CSs or AVs that have capacity, like the Japanese and some allied aircraft do, like this... Chiyoda, right? It can carry 24 aircraft, so we can definitely start resizing uh, your float planes on a float plane tender like this, right? All right. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was informative for you guys that have never messed with uh, resizing before. And again, if you have questions, let me know and I'll answer them. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you guys on the next topic soon. Okay, guys. So I was looking through the video that I just made. And I realized that uh, the dialog boxes for the resizing of the aircraft were not coming through because I was doing a a window capture as opposed to a display capture. So I want to just briefly show you what you were missing every time I kept talking about um, uh, manual resizing windows. So I'm going to just show you real quick because I don't want to make this video over again. Uh, let's bring up the Zuiho. So this is what I was talking about. When you click on this up here, all right, if you keep clicking, you'll get this dialog box. And you kept missing this in my videos because it, the way that OBS captures videos, it doesn't like to capture um, dialog boxes. This is the box you were missing, okay? When you hear me talking about manually typing in aircraft, this is what I'm talking about. Again, I was seeing it the whole time I was telling you. You were not because of the way I capture the video. So, again, this is the box. You click up here until you see it. Uh, any number of clicks, it's like two to three clicks, brings up the box, okay? And from here, you can type in your max aircraft sizes, right? See how it says resize to 30? If I click it again, I can change it to 25. 20, there you go. Just keep clicking up in this box for any eligible aircraft that can resize. And you'll get this dialog box that you were missing in the other parts of my video. So I just want to make sure I make that clear. This is what I was talking about previously uh, when I was talking about a, a dialog box that opens up and you can manually type it in. That's it. Okay, I'm done now. Thank you so much. Bye.